¿Qué es lo que busca un director de Disney en artistas que quieren trabajar para él? Esta y muchas preguntas más le hicimos al director de La Bella y la Bestia, el joven Notre Dame, Atlantis y muchos cortos de DreamWorks, Gary Trousdale. Hola, soy Eri Sincer, pintora y diseñadora de películas animadas y este es mi canal donde les enseño historias, tutoriales, consejos y todo lo que se les pueda ocurrir del mundo de la animación y arte digital. Así que si todavía no lo haces, suscríbete al canal para que estés al pendiente de toda esta información que estoy compartiendo y voy a compartir. First question, if you had to do this all over again, what advice would you give yourself and what would you focus your trajectory on? The funny thing is, a lot of, a lot of my career has depended on um, just like chance and luck, you know, <laughs> like being in the right place at the right time. Um, and and I, can't really, I can't really advise anybody on like how to do that. <laughs> I, I don't you know? I, I mean, the, the best the best thing I can say is to keep an open mind. And this is something that I did have to learn early on, is that a lot of people go into this, this business thinking, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be an animator. I'm going to be a background painter. You know, I'm, I'm going to, whatever, whatever their, their path is that, that, that they've set for themselves. And something else might open up that they are capable of but had not thought of that you know or, and even have no experience in yes but um but 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 it's a door that opens that if you're closed-minded you're not going to take that door you know you're no i'm i'm going to be an animator um stay flexible you know keep an open mind and you know i mean that I guess the first the first instance of that, and it was a little difficult, but it was was the idea of you're not going to be a character animator, you're going to be an effects assistant. It's like okay, effects. I've never done effects. I can draw effects. I mean, it's still drawing. It's still animating. It's still you know basic principles. Um, but then you know, okay, now you now you need to learn layout. Okay, I haven't done layout before, and you know you might find you have. Um, You, you, you might find you have a uh, a talent for it. Yeah. The other thing is try to find happiness in what you're doing in the moment. Um, don't always be looking for the you know for the greener pastures next door yeah. because they might be there and they might not. Because I've known people over the years that have just been miserable their whole career because every, they're always convinced that there's something better. Someone else has somewhat something better than they do. And that if only I could just do this, I'd be happy. And when they finally do get that, there's, there's, you know, there's another step to the ladder and another. And they're always miserable. You know, just find, find happiness where you are, where you're at. If it's a crap production, the people are probably good, or maybe the food's good, or maybe the bar next door is good. I mean, whatever it is, yes, yes. there's, you know, there are things, there are things to uh, to find satisfaction and joy in your work. That's a great answer, and I think it's going to resonate with a lot of people. And <laughs> I think you basically answered the next question, which is, can I get a job in the industry without experience? Without experience. Um, can I get a job in the, in the industry without experience? In, in the U.S., it was tough. When I was, when I was first like, looking around for work, um, because the unions here were such that you couldn't get into a studio, a union studio. Most of them were union studios. You couldn't get into a union studio unless you had had union experience. And the only way to get union experience was to get work in a studio. <laughs> How do you do that? You know, it's like, I got I to gotta get work in the studio, but I can't get work in the studio because I'm not in the union. So, you know, you had to find, you, ha you had to find some, um, some kind of some some little independent studio that that was willing to hire and willing to take a chance or i mean occasionally a union studio would there are clauses i guess where if they see somebody they think is an absolute genius that they'll they'll take them in and you know mentor them up i didn't fit that category so i, I went the i went the uh, the independent studio route yeah hey queen girl you have done it again and it took a while It took a long time, and it took. Um, I I've told people I've told students that um, 
get ready to hear no a lot because um, when I was when I was you know first out of school and and trying to get trying to get work well, okay so the the first job I got I mentioned before the Tom Carter's uh, studio where I met Floyd that was pretty good that was literally right out of school I was in school and saw the bulletin on a on a bum down to Hollywood and we'll you know great you know and and I got hired that day so that was that was pretty amazing that was a little startup studio um and when they went out of business th suddenly I was like back back at square one I have I have to find someplace that'll that'll take me in um and I went around a lot to the point where I had rejection letters that were like on my stairway in my apartment, I just like pinned them to the wall and I had like wallpapered my stairway with, with le letters that said, we're sorry, but we don't have anything for you at this time. No. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's, that's how that went. And again, it was timing that, that finally got me into Disney studios. I was working in an, in an illustration um, shop that, um, doing menus and flyers for like bars and restaurants and, and such. When, when I finally got the call from Disney that, that said, do you want to, you know, I, I had submitted my, my effects portfolio like nine months prior to that. And they said, well, we'll give you a call. And that usually means no, you know, and they say, yeah, we'll call you. That means no. Um, but this time it meant we'll call you. And they did. That's so cool. So yeah, it's like you say, if you, you have to find the experience any way possible. Like starting right. in small studios, it's a great idea. Or like you say, if you are Da Vinci, well, you maybe have the entrance already laid for you, but the most likely you'll get a no every single time. And I know it, yes. No, God, please, no, no! Yeah. Yeah, so that's a great answer, thank you. You know, it's not like no, you know, you, you're, you're not good enough. It's just, it's, it's, it's just how the business works, you know? It's, it's just how they do things and It's hard to hard to take for a while, like to understand that it's it's probably not personal, you know. Unless you're a real jerk, it's not personal. Yes, <laughs> it's yes. just how they operate, you know. And and when they say we'll get back to you, and you're hoping they'll get back to you tomorrow or by Friday or something like that, they got a zillion things on their mind, and you'll be lucky if they get back to you in a month. Yes. and that's another thing you gotta, you know, you gotta just keep in mind is like. Okay, they said they'd get back to me. I can't wait around. I'll, you know, keep looking around. Keep, keep asking other places. Um, did someone asked, is there uh, if age is a factor for finding artists? It's. Um, I mean, this is going to be this is going to be a depressing answer. It's like, yeah, it is a factor. Um, yeah. If if you have if you have a lot of experience, you've got a, a, a resume or um, a portfolio that, that's just outstanding, you stand a better chance. But if, if you're just starting out and you're in your mid 40s, it's going to be tough. Yeah. Um, I, I was aged out at, uh, at, at DreamWorks. What? What the fuck? You know, because I was, uh, I, was, I was coming up on 60 years old and um, I was told officially no, we just don't have any work for you at this time. There's just no projects for you at this time. I was told unofficially by my producer, um, yeah, you're old and expensive and they can find somebody, you know, in, in you, you're like half your age that, that will do it for a third of what you make. So that, uh, yeah. So, so it's, it's not easy. I mean, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to say don't try because that that's just, that's just crazy. Yeah, absolutely try. But um, it's not as easy No, because, because studios, studios look for, you know, for like art students who are, who are talented and good enough and work cheap. That's just the reality of the business. Yeah. It's a business at the end. Um, another question is beside artistic qualities, what other skills are they looking for in the big studios such as Disney? Aside from artistic, artistic qualities, being, being artistic a artist, yeah. What other qualities are they looking for? Big studios and and big productions. They want to know that you can work with other people. She's got a point. They want to know that that um, 
that you are cooperative, that you're not a pain in the ass or a hothead or, you know, somebody, who, somebody who's going to give them problems. Um, they don't, they don't particularly care for prima donnas, no matter how talented you are, you're in, you're in a corporate setting and you're on a team and they really want you to understand that and, and work that way. Yeah. Um, and this is something, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard for some people. And this, this is another thing I tell students is like, when you're in art school, when you're do, in film school and you're doing your student film, this is it. This is basically your last chance to be your own boss and to not compromise at all. Because the minute you work with one other person, you're starting to make compromises. Whether it's your, whether it's your, your brother, whether it's your wife, whether it's your, um, your boyfriend, well, you know, whoever it is, um, your twin, you know, you, one other person, and they're going to have their ideas, and you're going to have your ideas, and no matter how close you are, you're still going to be making compromises. Now multiply that by, you know, by two or three hundred. And put some executives that don't know what the hell they're doing on top of that. And yeah, it's you. You have to um, you have to learn to get along with people. You have to learn to play nice. It's true. Um, and the other thing, um, the other thing is don't get too upset. You know, because you're gonna get pissed off. It's guaranteed. They're gonna get pissed off. Um, and I had um, a mentor tell me long long ago at disney this, this is an old guy who started like back on lady and the tramp at disney and he said to me to be you know an effective artist that, that wasn't it it was it was more specific but basically to be an effective artist at a studio you either have to have a cast iron ego or none at all because you're gonna get you're gonna get criticism you're gonna get problems you know and you got to learn to deal with it whether you just let it roll off your back or whether you stand up to it however you deal with it you're gonna have to deal with it yeah it's true absolutely so someone asked me specifically about storyboarding how do you start a career in storyboard <laughs> well uh the best way is to start when you're about six years old <laughs> and read a lot of comic strips yes um Honestly, comic strips and comic books are a good, a good um, kind of subconscious guide. You know, when you when you look at those and you see how a story is is spelled out in um, in a sequential form with drawings, that gives you an idea of, of of what storyboard is. And that's you know when you when you're trying to explain storyboarding to someone who has no idea about how films are made, and you say, oh, and then we do the storyboard process. And you, and you see them go, huh? You go, oh, it's, it's like a comic strip. Yeah. And then they get it. And that's that's it exactly. So um, storyboarding involves, it's hard to say now because storyboarding has changed from the years when I was doing it to now. Now it's a lot more tight and controlled. But, okay, to be fair, there, there was... Um, there was that degree, you know, in some studios that would like send, they'd send work to like the Philippines or China or whatever, and they needed their storyboards to be super, super tight. Yeah. Um, at Disney, we were very loose. You know, it was, it was just, you just want the idea. You want, um, you want the expression and the performance and, and the, um, the backgrounds or the, you know, the, the logistics weren't as important. It's good to have, a working knowledge of the logistics of camera moves and um, scene continuity and things like that. And there are books that you can get um, online or hard copy that explain a lot of these things to you. Know, what's, what's the difference between a close up and a dolly zoom? What's the difference yeah. between <coughs> what's a Texas two shot? You know, what's a, what's a, um, uh, what's an extreme close up? What's a, what's a pan? What's a zoom? What's a, uh, what's a zip, you know, all, all these, what's a repeat pan, all these different things that, that you're going to need to know. Um, a lot of which I picked up kind of on the job because I was doing comic strips, you yeah. know, and, and you look around at, at the people around you, who, what they're doing and, oh, okay, I see. So you, you soak in a lot of it from other people. Wait a minute. Who are you? Yeah, that's, that's true. Thank you so much. 
Another question is, what are the biggest challenges in working for big studios? <laughs> Getting in the door. is <laughs> probably the biggest challenge. Yes, I agree with you. I was going to say that to this person, knocking the door and them answering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you, definitely. And this question is a little bit more personal. What are the things that you are looking to find in artists that want to work with you? Um, I would say uncritical praise and slavish obedience. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular. Uh, <laughs> no, that's that's not true. Um, I like I like people who I mean, obviously, I'm I'm looking for talented artists, but but people who can also think for themselves and articulate what they think for themselves, um, and a, and a bit of versatility. You know, if 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 um, if I'm working on something and I need somebody to do storyboards or character design or something, and and they only have one kind of character design, that's good for one project. But it'd be nice, again, in team building and, and crew building. Once you get your crew together, if I've got somebody who can who can uh, you know design a character for a, a goofy little commercial and also characters for you know a big epic feature that's good you know that's that's the one person and that's somebody that i have an ease of communication with and a relationship with rather than okay thanks now you got to go and i got to find somebody else yeah so yeah, so so somebody somebody who's a, who's kind of versatile um and yeah and talented you know um i i you know i'm not i'm not looking for somebody who can who can animate and paint and do camera moves and all that. I'm, I'm just talking about like within their one discipline, the more you know, the, the better, that's great. Yes. But, um, but um, like background painter or, or modeler or whatever, you know, the more you can do within that discipline, the, the, the better. Yeah, I agree. That's a great answer. And someone asked, um, I studied industrial design. Can I still work in the industry? And there's a lot of questions like that. They, I, I'm an architect, I'm a chemist, I'm a physicist, I am a, a whatever. Can I still work in the industry? I'm gonna, I mean, it's this is a qualified answer, but yes. Oh my God, wow. You know, I mean, you, you're you're a chemist, but do you draw or do you, do you know, um, do you know some of these animation programs or, you know, these, uh, what, Okay, you're a chemist or, or, or a biologist or a, or a weatherman or, you know, whatever. Do you, what do you bring to the animation industry? I mean, yeah, you can, you can work in here, but, but you can't just like walk in the door and say, hi, I'm a cab driver. Can I have a job? We, you know, we're going to look for some, something that you offer this industry. Did I lie? Did I lie? The first part of that question was, I'm an industrial designer. Can I still industrial work? designer? Yeah. Hell yeah! I mean, sure. <laughs> I, I don't know why not. I mean, you know, and there's going to be there's going to be for like industrial design. There's going to be certain areas that will probably be more appropriate. You know, like prop design or or layout or scenery or things like that. You know, like and by scenery I mean probably like cityscapes or urban design or things like that. But those would probably be more appropriate than say well maybe even color you know because industrial design does include color work so possibly a colorist or or something like that but um an, an animator or a writer or you know one of those eh, we'd have to see you know <laughs> we've got, got to see what you got um before before i while i was in high school I wanted to be an architect. That was that was where I wanted to go, and I was taking back then. It was called mechanical drawing, and it, you know, with the T squares and triangles and all that, they didn't have the uh, the digital <coughs> free computer. This is when computers were like steam powered and like the size of a house. Um, or no, we had like little calculators that you could buy for like nine hundred dollars, but. Uh, <laughs> It was not. It was not the same as today. And so, so mechanical drawing and architectural drawing was done by hand. And I thought that that appeals to me. 
but it also involves um, a level of engineering knowledge and math, which I sucked at. So that's why my um, my senior year of high school, I abandoned architecture, like reluctantly said, this is not going to work and looked around for, and fortunately found um, the the, um, the path to uh, California Institute of the Arts. Yeah. That's a great answer. And I think it's going to inspire a lot of people that didn't have access to an, imagine in Mexico, <laughs> the animation career, it's very um, scarce and is not as, prepared because it's a new business in Mexico. So many people didn't study that. So this is going to give them a quite a big spectrum of all the ways that they can exploit their new abilities or their knowledge. It was to get an idea. A new movie, you got to know what it's about. I yep. mean, I assume you know what it's about. <laughs> if, you, if you say, okay, I want to I want to do a movie and you don't know what it's, you know, you need, you need your idea. Um, it's best to get it down on paper yeah. um, or digital or whatever you young people do these days. <laughs> um, um, but, but I mean, start with, um, you know, start with just a short outline, a paragraph or two, a page long, like, okay, so what is it? And then you expand that, you know, you break it down into, uh, uh, I won't say acts, but, uh, you know, d scenes, you know, if, if you can kind of see this in your head, um, and that eventually turns into a script. Or yeah. at least a treatment, you know, that, that you can read like maybe three or four pages and get an idea. You can see, you can see who these characters are, what they want, what they're doing, um, you know, what what your what your movie is about, with a little bit of uh, a little bit of flair, a little bit of color, a little bit of um, a little bit of background to them. Um, if you are if you are an artist, draw your character, draw your character up, draw their home, whether it's you know it's it's. A, the um, the axe murder shack out in the woods, whether it's a castle, whether it's um, you know a, a penthouse apartment, whatever it is, draw the, draw their uh, draw their environment if you can, um, draw their friends, draw their pets, draw you know so that you have you have some visual reference and you can you can put those characters in that in that uh, outline or that script that you wrote, and so it becomes it, it begins to come together that way. Um, and then, and then when you go completely insane, then you start storyboarding it yourself. <laughs> what do you think are new challenges for new artists? What do I think are new challenges for new artists? In this era of animation. Um, I mean, technology is, is pretty crazy. Seriously, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, it, it's, it's pretty amazing, but it's also, it changes so fast and to for me it's you know I, it's not even an option anymore it's like yeah i i, I don't know i let the, I let the kids do that that part but yep. you know for a new artist um the the programs that that i was using and that my crews were using like you know back at uh back on the shrek specials you know those were those were fully uh fully digital the disney stuff i did those were all those were all hand drawn or mostly hand drawn um but the but the DreamWorks um, the PDI DreamWorks stuff was was all digital. So I was like kind of learning a little bit about the technology. That stuff is like Stone Age now. I mean, it's you you well you you know you hear about like human years and dog years. That's like regular years and computer years. You know, it was like that was like so long ago. This the stuff is virtually worthless now. Um, and you see, you see studios that are like keep trying to update their pipeline and update their uh, update their technology with varying levels of success. I've heard some things about DreamWorks recently that are kind of kind of alarming. So. Oh my gosh! Yeah, not yeah. The Pixar way, not the Pixar way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh <coughs> so those are big challenges, you know, keeping up with the technology, keeping up with. <coughs> Keeping up with, um, you know, the the new, it's, I, I'm, I guess the hardware is all the same, but the new software, um, and how to, how to, how to make it work. Um, I, you know, the other thing is the changing tastes in storytelling. Um, there's always, there's always something new. You know, I mean, it's like, and I, I met with, um, uh, I had dinner with, uh, with Kirk Wise last night. And, you know, we were talking about this and, and, and he said, I don't know what the hell people want anymore. 
I have, I have a clue. Nani? <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's that's it. You know, it's like like five years ago, people wanted princess stories. Um, then they wanted westerns. Then they wanted sci-fi. Then they wanted, uh, you know, like like coming of age stories with like kids who were different than everybody else. Then you know, it's like and. It's like hitting a moving target. You know, you're at a, you're at a shooting gallery and the ducks are going like this. You got to hit one of them. And <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, just just keeping your footing in this business for for a new artist or you know or a veteran artist. It's it's about the same. It's it's just as crazy for everybody. Got it. Um, can non-U.S. citizens work work for Disney? And the answer is yes. Um, it's it's a little bit, you know, there, there's, there's a few more steps that have to be taken and, and it, there's steps that generally have to be taken by the studio. You know, they have to, well, number one, the, the artist needs to be of a caliber that uh, U.S. lost as that, uh, you know, you can't find this kind of quality work within, within the U.S. or within the state of California or whatever. So, th so that you have to go out and, um, and, and hire this person from another country. And Disney has done that all the time. Yep. And they have, you know, the, the forms and the people and, and everything. Um, I know they've, they've kind of screwed it up a couple of times. You know, the, the, I've, I've known people that, uh, you know, have been working there for a year or two. And then suddenly uh, they got a call from, uh, um, from <laughs> customs and immigration and, you know, we, we had a couple of girls that were deported to Canada because um, because the Dis because the uh, no, this was DreamWorks that did this. Okay. The DreamWorks uh, they they fucked it up. Um, but you know, it all worked out in the end. But Disney has this; they've got it pretty much down. You know, they they know what they're doing. There there is a process for it, and so the answer is yes. Uh, yeah. So here are um, four questions that are more personal to you as an artist. Um, how do you deal with an artistic block when you're working in the industry? You know, you gotta, you gotta deliver and you just can't. So how do you deal with that? Well, there's a few ways. Um, I mean, pretty much every time I get an assignment, you know, like um, a writing assignment, a storyboarding assignment, whatever, there's an instant block. You know, there's like, I don't go, okay. And, and you know, just start going. I have to, I have to let it sit for, at least a day um, when, when, uh, when, when production schedules were a little more relaxed, I'd let it go for up to a week. You know, I just like walk around, I drink coffee, I take long walks, um, <laughs> do whatever. Yeah. I mean, just, just whatever. And um, long ago I worked with, uh, with Roy Disney's son, um, Tim Disney. Ah! Because he was he was a writer on Oliver and Company, and and he had said, um, kind of in in response to this same question, um, it's like when you're doing the dishes, right? And you've got a you've got a, a pot that the stuff inside has been burned onto the sides and the bottom, and you can't get it out. You know, just by looking at it, you don't have a you don't have a hope in hell of, of getting that out. Yeah. So you let it soak. You just let it soak. And that's, and that's what you're letting your brain do. You're letting it soak. Um, the other, uh, uh, that's one way. If you are really pressed for time, um, you know, in, in your production or you've got a, a, a production manager or, uh, you know, something like that, breathing down your neck, that's when you go into fake it till you make it. Nice. <laughs> just, just start drawing something. Just start writing something. And maybe something will click. You know, it's like the little Tetris blocks in your brain yes. might accidentally fit together and, and you'll come up with something, but at least you'll look busy, you know, you know, so you won't, so you won't get in trouble, but, but um, yeah, just start doing something. And this is, it's not, it's not a technique I recommend, but I have used it because it's, you know, it's, it's kind of shaky and it feels, I mean, in your own mind, you know, you're wasting time, but you're really not, you're really not. You are, you know, you are getting the wheels turning. You're just turning them a lot faster and, you know, maybe faster than you like. And you might not quite not come out with as good as stuff at the start. Yeah. But, 
but when you keep going, yeah, it it'll it will refine and it will you'll you'll get your groove and it'll be better. And then the last version is just talk it over with friends. You know, go go out for a drink with your friends and say, the fuck am I doing? You know, what what's what's going on with this? Um, and ideas will come. Trust other people. Trust you know trust other people in your in your, in your business in your team or whatever. It's like I've I've hit a block. You know. Yeah. Um, this character is going to this place and I'm not sure what to do with it, you know, and, and they'll, you know, there will be an idea somewhere. It might be an idea you hate, but at least it's a different point of view that you can bounce off of. Yeah. That's a great idea. Is there a determinate, a determinate point on your career that got you where you are now? Where am I now? Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess there, there's, I mean, it, my, my, my career has, has been kind of zigzaggy. First determinant, determinant point was probably just getting in the, getting in the door at Disney studios. The next one was getting bumped up from, um, from doing special effects in between and what we call pinholing, um, back in the day to storyboard and uh you know getting getting into like stories stories on on films like little mermaid you know that that were like in my mind good movies you know and and yeah. getting to work with really good people getting to getting to storyboard you know kind of side by side with roger allers and ed gombert and and uh, i mean rob minkoff worked on that and uh you know so getting to work with people like that, that to kind of hone my own skills and, and then getting that call on that Monday morning, you know, to like, um, because it had been seen that, that I wasn't a complete screw up. Um, <laughs> and, and the Disney was desperate at the time, um, getting that call to, to direct Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Okay. Was your family, family supported in your artistic career? Um, Yeah, they were. Um, my mom wasn't what you would call artistic, but she was craftsy. Oh, you know? yes. So yeah, she she was she was brought up doing like a lot of arts and crafts kind of stuff, and was was really good at it. She was very good seamstress, and my grandmother was a seamstress during the uh, during the Great Depression. Um, and then my mom learned sewing from her, but also would do other you know, just like paper sculpture. And she, she at one point took a class and learned how to do pretty well, how to paint like China, you know, cups and mugs and plates and, and things like that. So she had that in her, not the greatest, but they're pretty good. <laughs> um, yes. um, my dad had no artistic ability. He was an athlete. Um, And, but he he was very supportive. Um, he you know my first year at at uh, at Cal Arts, uh, I would come home on the weekends and work. You know I, I had a job at a at a pizza restaurant. You know so I so I would work there, and then my dad would drive me out because I didn't have a car at that time. He would drive me back out to school for the week, and every goddamn week he had the same joke. He's like, "So how's your football team doing?" Going to the lower art school, we don't have it, you know. But that was funny to him every week, you know. That's so cute. So, yeah. And then I've learned later, like much, much later in my life. My dad has uh, passed away uh, many years ago, but um, I learned from a friend, uh, a woman I, I grew up with, basically. Um, I from kindergarten all through all through high school. Her father was the um, was the principal in the elementary school that I went to, but I got I got a note from her at one point that my father worked for Parks and Recreation for which is why I can't watch that show. Okay, it's, yeah. The show called Parks Shut and Recreation. Up, yes. I absolutely do not watch that show, um, but but he worked for Glendale Parks and Recreation, and the the next town over is Burbank. So there's Glendale, here's Burbank. Dad worked here. Tim Burton's dad was in Burbank Parks and Recreation. What? That's so and I didn't know this at the time. I was never told this. 
until this girl told me about five years ago that, yeah, your dad and Tim Burton's dad would get together because, the, you know, the, the two cities often overlap. They would get together and, and talk about you guys. You know, they would like, you know, like, yeah, my son draws cartoons. Yeah, oh, my, my son's got these crazy movie ideas. And, and so they would, I never knew this. That's but so evidently he was he was more supportive than I knew. Yeah, that's so that's so cute. That's um that's really awesome. Yeah. yeah. And the last question, which I think it's something that they've asked me many, many times, and I would love to hear your feedback or your point of view. What would you say to someone who has been wanting to enter this industry for a while and hasn't made it? And hasn't made it. Uh that's that's a hard one. I mean, because it's not it's It's not an answer you really want to hear. And the answer is keep trying. Yes. You know, the, the answer is, is don't give up. I mean, when you give up, you give up and, and that's it. But, um, but basically don't give up. And so, so here's, and, and, and it involves, it involves work on your part. You know, it involves practice. It, it might be because, um, It might be because of the economy. It might be because of the, you know, the 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 studio situation at, at the time. Um, it might be because studios see your work as not quite being what they want to see, not quite being the quality that they want, and you need to get better. And this is where practice comes in. Stop it. Get some help. And this is where I tell a story um, of of a friend and colleague. Had dinner with him last night too. We knew there were a bunch of us, um, but but this was a guy who he had gotten into animation, like I think in the in the seventies. You know, he he he'd been around for a little while, and he'd been there a long time and was never never that good. He was okay. He was a very solid worker. He's a very hard worker, but he wasn't that talented a worker. You know, so he was always giving the real crap scenes. For animation, the crap scenes are like close up of a hand turning a doorknob or a foot step, you know, just like yes. like real, you know, just like real basic stuff that, that like, you know, the good animators didn't really want to do. They just want to yeah. pass it off to somebody to just crank it out. Yeah. And this guy was the crank it out guy. He was like, you know, the B grade, C grade animator. But he always, 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 whenever I saw him, I swear to God, for years, Like any any break, because there were union mandated breaks and lunch breaks and things like that, he was always drawing. He was always sitting out on a bench or always sitting in a, in a cafe or somewhere and always had his sketchbook. He was always drawing. Every goddamn minute of the day, he was drawing. Reason. What was the I reason? Just explain, I just explained the reason. What was the reason, bitch? And one day, this was years later, um, on Hunchback, because he, he worked for us on Beauty and he did some scenes in Beauty that, again, hands turning doorknobs, you know, that, that kind of, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, give it to Ron. He'll, you know, he'll do it and he'll, he'll do fine, but, but it's nothing inspired and nothing great. And all of a sudden, you know, he was given a couple scenes and it was like, holy shit, Ron did these? These are really good. And we gave him, we gave him a character. We gave him um, to supervise because we had, we had a, a character in Hunchback. It was the goat, right? Yeah. Jolly, the goat. And there was a there was a supervising animator on, on that, and she she was very high maintenance, and you know so we were like struggling with her and she was struggling with us, and she finally decided this isn't for me, and so we had a character that had no supervisor, so we gave it to this guy to to Ron, and he just he just took off with it, and, he, and from then on he was great. It was like a light switch had turned. And yep. that's literally how it is. And I've had this myself as well, like a certain kind of painting style that I could not get, could not get, could not get, and kept trying and trying. And all of a sudden the light switch went on and it, it happens, you yeah. know, and, and you have, and I mean, for me, it took about a year and a half for Ron. It took maybe about 20 years. Yeah. So any, any time in there is it's, it's possible. Yeah, it is. And it, like I said, it's not the easiest answer to hear, but that's, That's the best answer I got. So yeah. thank you so much, Gary, for giving us your information, your knowledge. Really, from my followers and myself, we thank you so much for giving us your time. Muchísimas gracias, Gary, por darnos tu tiempo. Sé que mucha gente quería saber esta información. Creo que nos ha ayudado muchísimo. 
y vamos a agradecerle muchísimo que está aquí con nosotros. Gracias. ¿Qué tal esas respuestas? No, a mí me encantaron porque lo hicieron ver real. No esta fantasía que mucha gente nos vende de los casos que son contados con las manos de artistas que simplemente aplicaron estos estudios y los aceptaron fácil, ¿me entienden? Entonces me hizo ver que mi historia no es rara, es común y que posiblemente lo que ustedes están pasando ahorita es muy común. Entonces se siente padre el saber que es algo común. En fin, nos vemos en el próximo.